Now, I'm a big fan of Jupyter Notebook because it is a clean web-based development environment. However, if you come to the current SageMaker console, I don't see Jupyter Notebook as one of the options at the top. Instead, Jupyter Notebook is pushed down all the way to the bottom and uh, seems like Jupyter Notebook is falling out of favor. In fact, AWS is heavily promoting the SageMaker Studio as their ultimate end-to-end -end model development platform or MLOps platform. Now, the first benefit is that you have a choice of IDs. You can use JupyterLab or VS Code or RStudio. So depending on your preferences, you can pick and choose your favorite IDE. Now, these IDs provide a lot more customization options. For example, you can change the theme to dark theme. You can easily integrate with a Git repository. And you can also install extensions like uh, Copilot or Code Whisperer and so forth. So clearly there are some benefits in using this full-featured IDEs. And then it appears that AWS is heavily investing in SageMaker Studio as their ultimate MLOps platform to manage their entire lifecycle. Now the third thing is that they have a library of uh, foundational models, which are popular Gen AI based models that are publicly available, such as Llama, GPT-3, 4, Stable Diffusion, and so forth. So AWS is claiming that they make it super easy to use and tune these models for your use cases. Now, I haven't tested all these features, so I have to take it for what AWS is promising. Having said that, if you look at Hugging Face interface and OpenAI interface, they make it super easy to use their foundational models. So from a usability perspective, if it comes any cl anywhere close to Hugging Face or OpenAI or one of those popular interfaces, I think we are in good shape. So I'm hoping for that. We'll eventually test all these features. Now to get started, uh, go to your SageMaker console and then uh, pick a region that's closest to you. In this case, I'm using an Oregon region. And also make sure you have an S3 bucket in the same region. That's where we are going to store our data and uh, trained models. So in the landing page, you have an option to set up SageMaker for a single user, or you can also set it up for an organization. Uh, this organization setup allows you to collaborate with other colleagues of yours. For now, we are going to go with the single user setup. So let's wait for the setup to complete, and then uh, we'll continue. When we went through a quick setup, AWS created what is called as a SageMaker domain. So that is a primary mechanism in which you can control access to your users to the studio environment, as well as manage a collaboration space, like a shared space, and uh, manage the permission each user has. The permission is granted using IAM roles or the execution roles. For now, the quick setup also created a default user profile. You are also free to add additional users if you like. So go ahead and uh, click on default user here, or you can uh, go and click on studio to set up your ID. Now you also see a studio lab option. So this is a free studio environment, uh, which is uh, kind of similar to Google Colab. It is not full featured like a regular studio. It has a subset of features, but it's free. If you prefer to use that, then uh, go ahead and click on that and then apply for access. Once AWS grants access, then you can use that environment. So we're going to focus on Studio here. So click on Studio, and then it's asking you to select the user profile. So we have only one user, default user. Go ahead and uh, open the Studio. So I'm going to skip the tour for now. So this is where you see different application options. You can either use JupyterLab or RStudio or uh, Code Editor and so forth. I tried both JupyterLab and Code Editor. What I found was that uh, the Code Editor is the VS Code option. It was not persisting customization settings like dark theme and other things. It was uh, constantly resetting every time I stop and restart, which was kind of annoying. So it looks like they are still working out some issues there. Whereas the JupyterLab interface seemed a lot more stable. So I'm going to go with the JupyterLab option and create a JupyterLab space. So at this point, when you create a JupyterLab space, you can choose it to keep it private. So only you have access to all the files and data that you store in your space, or you can share it with other users in your domain. 
So if you want to collaborate with other users, use this option. Otherwise, you can go with the private option. So I'm going to name it as JupyterLab and uh, go ahead and create the space. At this point, it's asking you what type of instance you want to use for your JupyterLab environment. So I'm going to go with the default settings and uh, go ahead and uh, run this. By default, it comes with 5 GB of storage. You can also increase your storage here. Looks kind of similar to when you're setting up Jupyter Notebook. You have to specify the instance type and how much storage you want, any lifecycle configuration and so forth. So now you have the Jupyter Lab running. Now in case if you want to come to the screen, you can also click on Jupyter Lab and it will show you the current instances that are running and its uh, status. And you can also stop and start here. So let's go ahead and open it. Now, first thing you may want to do is change your color theme, the background, which is fairly straightforward. So go to settings, theme, and uh, I'm going to switch to the dark mode. So that's it. So it's very easy to customize. So even if you stop and restart your Jupyter Lab, all the settings are preserved. So I'm going to clone my SageMaker course uh, Git repo. So copy the Git location. If you go into JupyterLab, select the source control option, Git, and uh, choose the clone a repository option and uh, provide the repository URL. So the color is not very visible, let me highlight it. So it's pointing to my Git repo. And uh, select clone. So let's take it for a quick spin. So I'm going to go into XGBoost and bike sharing regression. So I'm going to prepare the data, bike rental data preparation rev3. And if it asks for a kernel, pick an appropriate kernel. So in this case, uh, we're going to use Python 3 kernel. You also have a choice of other kernels and you can also customize the kernels. You can install additional packages and give it a different name if you like. For now, Python 3 has everything we need. So let's go ahead and select uh, Python 3. And then I'm going to increase the font. And you can also make it full screen, like so. So let's go ahead and run all the cells. And it created the training and test data needed for the next step. So this is the bike training problem in Coggle. So we are using that data set to prepare the data and then uh, let's go and see how to train the model. So if you want to look at the files that are available, click on the file browser. And the next thing we are going to do is uh, train the model locally. And uh, so this is going to install, so let me clear the output. So this script is going to install XGBoots if it is not there already. In fact, this Python 3 environment already has XGBoots. So let's go ahead and run all the cells. So this script is going to train an XGBoots model for a bike rental problem and then uh, evaluate the performance. So as you can see, XGBoots is already installed in this uh, kernel, so we are good. And uh, if I scroll down, trained an XGBoost model and the validation and training error, they look good. And uh, here is our prediction on the test data. So actual and predicted are shown. So as you can see, it's fairly straightforward to set up a Jupyter Studio lab environment. Hope you like this. If you have any comments, feel free to reach out to me through comments or through Q&A forum. Thank you so much.